Hey everybody, Sam here and welcome back to Sam Craft. Today's video is going to be extremely laid back, might be a little bit boring because honestly, it's a shop vlog. So I'm down at my workshop today and just for kind of reality reference sake, today is Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. I live in the eastern part of the U.S. and we had a fresh dumping of snow all over us um, a couple of days ago. It's still here. So that has totally halted any work on the new workshop build. So if you're following along with the channel real time, you'll be seeing workshop build and then plop, this video pops up. So as such, this is going to be extremely laid back. I mean, not the normal, okay, okay high quality you're used to from the channel. This is um, me down in my workshop today doing some various stuff and honestly thought I'd bring you guys along to chat virtually one way and let you guys know what's going on and share some thoughts and ideas. So let's go ahead and talk about the workshop first, the new workshop. Right now it is sitting under a very thick blanket of snow so eh, that's where it is. But as you can see I am still in this workshop. We're still here on our property where we live now, which is in North Carolina, and where the new building, new workshop property is in Tennessee, and so we travel over and we work on it as we can, and that is our goal to move there. We have a mobile home we live in, we own it, we're going to try and move it over there, and pretty much transplant ourselves across state lines to another property. So I don't think I've ever mentioned it in the workshop build videos that, yes, it is being built, but at the same time, I'm not homeless or shopless that this workshop here is continuing. It is kind of staying like it is right now. And so I at least do have it to use to maintain the small business aspect and also shoot some content for you guys. Even if that content is just a shop vlog, it's something. So as you look around the shop, you're gonna see it is a various levels of just absolute chaos. Um, right here on top of the table saw, I have a bank of eight batteries. That is because our goal and my, my intended purpose, what I will be doing, is the new workshop in Tennessee completely off-grid. That's batteries for a battery bank. I'm top topping them off, trickle charging, whatever, getting them maintain their juiceness. That's what I'm doing. Since it is freezing cold, make sure they're staying charged. Uh, we have solar panels, we have an inverter charger system and everything. So my goal with that workshop is to be 100% off-grid. One, because I think that's really cool and awesome and it's what I want to do. The other aspect of that is since we're moving our home to the property and building a house, we don't have any commercial power there or I guess not commercial, you know, normal mains power. So we're running that whole property off-grid. Right now we have a solar panel array hooked to a Blue 80 like solar generator battery box system and then we also have an inverter generator as backup for our camper setup situation out there. So that's working out great right now and is allowing us to be out there, get work done, kind of live and camp for long weekends or during the week, whenever we go over there. It is extremely random. But be out there without having official power, but still be able to do everything we need and have honestly all the power we do need. One of the cool things about having solar out there is that it has allowed us to see, you know, how solar works, kind of get that system going, learn, and honestly, just get me hooked on the idea. I would love, absolutely love to run our entire property off grid. That's really expensive, mainly because batteries are actually expensive, but it's at least my pie in the sky goal to work towards. So I say all that to explain why you're gonna see eight car batteries sitting on top of my table saw. I mean, they're not car batteries, they look automotive style, but they're AGM batteries, you know, appropriate for the solar system we're gonna build. Um, just to explain why there's batteries there. Uh, we're working with a company called Langston's Alternative Power. He's helping us get the system and get things set up the way we can, monetary-wise, and kind of stair-step into it, but also just answer our questions and everything of the sort. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I'll leave a link to his business down below. Just if you want to talk to him and get some ideas and see what kind of system he can get for you. Uh, really cool guy. His name's Spencer. Easy to talk to. So anyway, that's the reason why there's batteries, and that's who we've been working with, and... Well, the whole why of the situation. So if you follow me on Instagram, and this is by no means a, hey, go follow me. I'm not good at Instagram at all. But if you follow me over there, you'll have seen that I've been mentioning new things about a new laser in the workshop. Um, I am testing out a new one. It is the Jinmitsu Jinsoku LC-60A. It is another diode laser, but this one is very different in basically two 
realms, I guess. Um, one, it is huge. It is giant. It is like 30 by 30 inches. Big boy. And, okay, format big boy. It's still a diode. Um, the other thing that is different is it is sold from the manufacturer straight out of the box. Air assist, built-in pump, everything. It's complete turnkey. So I'm putting it to the test, seeing is it truly a laser cutter? Is it a cutter straight from the manufacturer? And is it something that might be cool for others who are looking to get into diode lasers that you know keep hearing about air assist but don't really know what pieces you need? And it looks like this is the first manufacturer to give you everything in a box as a kit all together. So very cool. Uh, preliminary results I'll show you in just a second. I'll also talk about the other thing I'll show you. Um, but I went down this segue rabbit hole to just tell you that you see other lasers, but the Otor is still here. The Otor is honestly the workhorse of my business and the workhorse of the shop. It's not because I'm a 100% Otor fanboy. Honestly, it's just the laser that I have that does the best for me. It's large enough format. I can throw 12 coasters on here at once since drink coasters are the number one thing that I do make. It's there and it's also dialed in and set up for my utensils that I engrave as well. Over here you'll see the Jimitsu LE-1620. That little guy, still great, rocks and rolls, no problem with that. I just don't tend to use it for my small workshop production because it only does two coasters at a time. And when I can plop and drop four or 12, that's just faster from a production standpoint. But still is over there, works great. No complaints at all with that laser. So, okay. So there's laser talk, I guess. Since I mentioned it, I'll go ahead and show you guys the Jimitsu Jinsoku LC-60A. Uh, their model numbers are amazing that I can get them out of my head into the camera microphone. But as you see here, it is a monster diode laser. Again, mostly in form footprint, not the actual laser diode itself. Uh, it's sitting here on top of my Shapoko Pro CNC, which... Yeah, well, it is what it is, and you know, whatever. And also, you'll see here, it has the air pump to the left, so that is awesome. And it comes pre-plumbed and tubed and everything for air assist. That air assist nozzle is solid brass, and it is very, very cool. So far, that laser is doing great. It is living up to its expectations so far, which is awesome. I'm still running through a bunch of test files and cuts and everything, and honestly, just using it for a while before I ever make an official video for you guys. So there's a look at the LC60A. Like I said, there'll be a video out on it later whenever I've had more time to get to know it. Um, what you saw on the bed there was one of several test file cut files that I've created. Um, for as far as like getting to know a machine, getting to dial in your settings, I've not found anything out in the world that I really like. So I just designed my own. It also is a way for me to offer it for you guys if you wanna just buy and run files and stuff and save a lot of time. So that's one that you saw there. Um, another one I've got set up is for cutting laser or leather. So here's a look at the leather. Uh, basically it's a multi-pass, yeah, multi-pass, multi-pass cut file. Um, it's per file it's like so many millimeters per minute at so much power and basically how many passes does it take to cut through your material. So that was leather. Here I've got true true Baltic birch plywood. This is eighth inch thick or three millimeter, I think. So there's a look at it. I've got, you know, it's a three by three file, but I just repeated the file over and over and over. So in this one board, it's a 12 by 12 board, I've got seven files that I ran and it's basically stepping it from 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 750 and 1000 millimeters per minute and all from one to 12 passes. This way you're able to see, you know, hey, at 500 millimeters per minute, yeah, okay, I can get through eighth inch Baltic birch plywood with six passes. Cool. If I want to slow it down to 100 millimeters per minute, I can only do it in two. So, cool. I figured this would be very beneficial for anyone. Obviously, I mean, honestly, it's beneficial for me first. It's just something I need because as I get material and I have, you know, eighth inch Baltic birch, well, how many, how many passes does it take? How many licks does it take to get the center of that lollipop? Something like this will tell me. So now I know forever, unless the diode laser poops out on me, I can say, all right, I got this design. Yep, this material. You know, I don't want to take slow passes. I don't want it to get too hot. So let's go ahead and do 300 millimeters per minute. And okay, looks like four passes is the minimum for me to get good crisp burn through cut. And it looks pretty good. Cool, rock and roll, let it go. 
So there is the multi-pass. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a fifth element movie reference. But yeah, there's the multi-pass test. The square. Here are like the individual of the test file. This is a different material. These are really thin. It is not Baltic birch. It's like just thin little plywood wooden coasters you can get. I got a stack of these. So ran through this kind of each individual file and kind of go from here, you know, 200 millimeters, 300, four, five, 750, and a thousand. So all the way down and, you know, pretty cool to be able to learn your machine. That's basically the goal of these is for you to learn your machine, learn its capabilities, its own individual nuances and what it takes to actually cut through whatever material you've got. So far I've cut through this little stuff. I mean, it's probably like two millimeter plywood really thin stuff the eighth inch Baltic birch and again this is Baltic birch not basswood I don't have any basswood I'm gonna try and see if I can find some if it's not too expensive to offer as a test for basically the LC60A um, but if nothing else true Baltic birch I know how long it takes to get through my three mil or eighth inch and then over there on the laser um, hang on This is quarter inch, so super thick Baltic birch, the real deal. Um, this is a test file that I originally created. I don't think I like this. I'll still offer it. You know, it's the goal with this was if you don't want to run your laser at 100% all the time, here's 25, 50, 75, and 100. But in retrospect, I don't think anyone's doing anything other than 80% or all out 100% power. I still have this in this this file kit that I'm putting together so if you want it you can have it otherwise I'm gonna flip this guy over and I'm just gonna run my multi-pass test files you know the little squares I'm gonna run it on this thing to see can I cut through quarter inch Baltic birch plywood or six mil I think three yeah six millimeter so we'll see I don't know if it'll be able to but we can try you can see right here there's a little bit of remnants of where it tried to and was almost successful that is I mean that's 100% power 100 millimeters per minute six passes so I don't know maybe on eight passes you'll get it we'll find out I'll load it up later and spend the long time it takes to go through all these cut files but ultimately be able to find out and tell you guys what that machine can do likewise I've been working on leather I have not worked a whole lot with leather, but I know a lot of people do. So I created a rectangular skinny file to be able to handle things like bookmarks or honestly the cheap little leather things that I got off Amazon. So the goal with doing these, what is my my goal other than just personal, you know, yay, I learn it. Um, my goal is also to offer this as the ultimate test file cut package from Samcraft. I don't know. I'm going to bundle it all together as one big file package. It'll be however many of these different test cuts at all these speeds and settings and everything. I'm just going to offer them up for sale on my website and I don't know, maybe some people are interested in just buying them, run it through Lightworks. Disclaimer, you will need Lightworks, but you should have it anyway if you use a diode laser. Um, just to be able to run and go and not have to program all of these. So far, I have this seven of these and then I think there's seven of these the little rectangles this is not just for leather I mean obviously this format and layout will let you do anything I made it for the leather bookmarks but if you got skinny little scraps of wood that would work that goes all the way up to 10 passes whereas the big or the larger squares go up to 12 passes so that's that all right, that's enough jabbering about lasers and stuff for now at least. I'm talking about the shop. I'm talking about the workshop and the fact that I am uh, slowly destroying this place. <laughs> so, I mean, you probably won't notice because I really have always tried to hide it from camera, but I have cleaned out this space a lot. It used to be, a couple of days ago, you could not get to the door where the AC is. So, that's like out of the shot. Twist it. Here we go. So double doors to the workshop. I would only ever come in this one. And that one was like stacked full of junk wood or scrap wood. I don't know. I'm leaning towards a lot of it was junk. So I spent the day and my boys and I dragged the fire pit over and I burned through a bunch of wood that I just didn't need. 
it wasn't good stuff it was just things that i kept for whatever reason so i'm just trying to downsize and prepare for the shop move i've got to kind of fight my hoarding bug that probably a lot of us struggle with as far as workshop and you know ooh, it's wood i gotta keep it i could use it for something i gotta kind of fight that with this because i'm gonna have to move all this stuff over and i'm kind of forcing myself to draw the line you know okay have i not really used this do i really think i will use it if not all right give it away donate it burn it just whatever don't take it with you to your next place don't bring your old junk to a new shop that's what i'm trying to do uh, at the same time um, as i went through my junk pile over there at the door i mean i was saving stuff like this i mean given that's a good chunk of wood oak but then i was cutting apart my baltic birch stuff from the cnc so things that were off cuts i'm saving um, strips stuff like that i mean I'm not I'm not too bad that's that's usable especially when I've got a whole new shop to build like inside so my thought with these is hey that could be I don't know tool holder or French cleat something or other or I don't know the sides of a drawer so I am keeping that kind of stuff I'm just trying to scale down what I keep if it's junk I need to toss it if it has a usable piece within it I need to trim it out and actually just get the usable piece out and save it. I've also got a bunch of hardwood over here. Over there on the wall, on the lumber racks. That I'm just going to transport over. I don't want to downsize any of that because it's hardwood and hardwood is dang expensive. So I'm just going to carry it over. I mean, it is what it is. Alright, that fan is really loud so we turn it off. Cool. I control it with a wise plug. Like a Wi-Fi plug w-y-z-e anyway whatever fan so i changed camera angles to give you guys another view of the shop let you see what can you see all right batteries and cnc and laser town and then tools that's pretty much it so i'm um, thinking as far as what tools i'm taking to my new shop and how i'm going to lay out that new shop i'm i'm considering something very drastic i'm considering something that I hope doesn't come back and bite me in the butt, but I don't know. What I'm considering is not taking my table saw. Thinking about selling it. Thinking about selling the table saw router thing all together as one. Mainly because it's a big saw. It is, you know, cast iron top. I don't know if it's a hybrid. It's probably a contractor, whatever. It's a 10 inch rigid table saw. I don't need one that big. The style of woodworking that I do. I've never used the table saw like it needs to be used. Anytime I've broken down large sheet goods, I've thrown down my circular saw and used it. Anytime I've I don't I don't I don't do dados, I don't cut dados, I don't do any kind of fancy joinery, I don't do box joints, and if I did, mm, I'll be tempted to use a CNC. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm learning or I'm at least coming to terms with I'm not that guy you're not that guy i'm not that guy that is like norm abrams or i don't know insert other woodworker here that uses a table saw for a lot of stuff apparently i'm just not that person i'll use it to break down goods i'll use it to occasionally cut rabbits in a piece i'm trying to think of the stuff i've built um otherwise i'm not not that guy well so anyway i'm thinking of selling my table saw and just not hauling it over to Tennessee to the new shop whenever that time comes. It's big. I mean, with the wings and everything, it's almost five feet wide, three feet deep. It's giant, and it just dominates the space and is largely only used as a table. Now, whether that means I get another table saw, like a smaller one, or I just think about not having a table saw at all, I'm not sure yet. Um, I, I love track saws. Those look really cool. I just don't know if I can use or have a track saw plus my miter saw it's hanging up right there i don't know if i can get around and and just be fine without a table saw or not i mean i guess i could always just get another table saw when the day comes that i realize i messed up but i don't know so anyway tool talk uh table saw is not going to go to the new shop for now at least um other stuff in here workbench will for now i mean it's an old 
crusty, cruddy, no good MDF workbench, but it's done. It's there. I'll probably haul it over. Obviously, CNC table, CNC dust collection, laser, and its little table. Yeah, probably will go. And the lathe, which is in the corner. Um, small little lathe. It's a Nova Comet, like, small lathe. So, that'll go. Bandsaw. Stuff like that will go to so pretty basic stuff, but I want to at least uh, drop the bomb on you guys Let you know that I don't think I'm taking the table saw and if I get another one or use another one I'll just get a small one because honestly, that's all I think I really need Yep You guys want to see the reality of Sam's shop behind the scenes and when there's no normal camera running uh, Yeah, packing up custom order here on top of the scrap plywood pile. I'm trying to hoard I'm just doing like probably anybody else would do. <laughs> Fulfilling a customer order while I'm down here making a mess of things. That's what I do. Um, so, when do I think I'll move into my new workshop? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, right now it's still just a dry shell. The siding is put on and the roof underlayment is on so it's water tight or weather tight I guess but it's not done um, I need to figure out what I'm doing about roofing I priced and got quotes from two different companies on the metal roof and it's gonna be a lot like oh my gosh a lot so I don't know if I'm doing metal roofing or shingles yet so I got a little bit of time to figure that out that synthetic underlayment is really good and I'm not worried about it deteriorating or falling apart in the sun or anything while I figure out what I'm doing. So shingles is not going to be a whole lot cheaper than metal roofing. So I may just bite the bullet and do metal, but I was really surprised at the cost. Outside of the roofing, I also need to paint it. I need to put my trim on and paint the trim, uh, build the door, attach it and all of that, and basically finish the shell of the workshop. After that, I then will move on to the inside. I'm going to be wiring it up and everything, of course. My goal is to have it finished like this shop is mostly finished. Um, the hard part or the tricky part with that is I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to have to start pulling this current workshop apart to help finish out the other. The cost of wiring is outrageous. The cost of any kind of material to build something is outrageous. And seeing as this workshop, I can't take it with us. We do own it. I'm going to reuse everything I need out of it. So I'm going to be pulling out the sub panel, the wire runs. I'll probably pull them out of the shop, pull the paneling down, stuff like that. So I'm kind of really dreading that. I wish that things were super cheap and I didn't have to scavenge myself because that's going to make a really awkward place for doing videos in that meantime of you know I'm trying to build the other place but I'm still here to use this shop for videos and stuff so I don't look forward to that because my shops will be tore apart and then we're gonna be moving at the same time and uh, we just uh, as a family as a whole we're not super excited and eager to take the next step which is really to make yourself homeless live in a camper for a while make yourself shopless and spread yourself across two states but oh well it is what it is we do want to move we are choosing to move we want to do that so it's just you know suck it up buttercup well guys i think that's probably gonna be it for the shop vlog because well i'm kind of done working down here for the day but i did at least want to shoot a quick video um although it's probably not super quick but whatever i wanted to give you guys a real life update you know what's going on here behind the scenes in between the videos of building the workshop and kind of what are my thoughts ideas and overall plan for what's going on. I uh, don't have a really great plan, mainly because I'm trying to keep this one shop alive while I build another, but not spend so much money to just duplicate and replicate everything. So either way, if I didn't cover anything that you were kind of hoping I would, or if I glazed over something or was really, really confusing about a part, feel free to ask me down below. Leave me a comment. I'm pretty transparent, pretty open, and I'm not trying to hide anything at all. So. It is what it is, and that's just how it is. So otherwise, hopefully you guys are enjoying the workshop build series. Outside of that, I do have plans, obviously, to show another laser engraver cutting machine. But I've also been building 
my notes and stuff around a video that I want to make about pricing. How do I price things and what's Sam's advice on pricing? So if you're here for the small business stuff, that will continue. That is still going to be something I provide. I'm just kind of in a, a lull because of disruption, but I'm also still planning and designing the next video along those series. So if you're interested in that, hang tight. That will be coming out someday. Otherwise, appreciate you guys watching. Take care as always, and I'll see you next time in the workshop or out there building the workshop or wherever. I'll just be here and you'll be there and it'll be good. See ya.